Math, we think of as being a discipline that's about answers. And to some degree it is, um, but it's also about questions. Abraham Wald, so he was a mathematician who worked in the statistical research group in World War II, worked on problems, top secret problems related to the conduct of the war. So you should think of it, it was kind of like the Manhattan Project, except it was actually in Manhattan. At some point, the army comes down to the SRG, and they have a question. They say, there's some piece of data analysis we need you guys to do. Um, we have noticed that when the planes come back from flying missions over Germany, some parts of the plane were getting hit more than others. It's an interesting issue. Here we go. So you can see that there were more hits on the fuselage of the plane, less on the engine, for instance. This was the kind of data that was given to Abraham Wall. And they said, what we need from you guys is we need to figure out where to put the armor on the planes. I mean, this is a serious optimization issue if you're running an Air Force, right? Because if you put too much armor on the planes, uh, they won't fly. So that's bad. If you put too little, they're not protected, which is also bad. So they had to figure out how much more armor they should be putting on the parts of the plane that were getting hit more. And they came to Abraham Wald and the statisticians at the, uh, at the SRG, and they said, we were hoping you guys, I don't know, would have some kind of like an equation or a formula for this. Like You can like look at this table and do your data magic and tell us how much more armor should we be putting on the parts of the plane that are getting hit more. And what Wald told them, he did give them the answer. He said, no, you guys have it completely wrong. You don't put the armor where the bullet holes are. You put the armor where the bullet holes are not. OK, this sounds strange to the people in charge. Because, as Wald explains, it's not that the Germans can't hit your plane on the engine. It's that the planes that got hit by on the engine are the ones that are not coming back from Germany. Let's stop and let this sink in for a minute. So in other words, this is what we would call in mathematics a biased sample, right? This is not a random sample of the planes. The ones that you're seeing, the ones that are returning from the mission, are exactly those, I mean, the fact that they come back like with full of hits on their fuselage means that a plane can get hit a lot on the fuselage and not crash, which is great. The fact that very few of them had bullet holes in the engine means that a plane that takes even one hit to the engine is very likely uh, to be incapacitated and destroyed. Now, I think a perfectly reasonable reaction that many people would have to this story is like, well, that's great, like he was a creative guy, like I'm impressed with his insight. Um, but you might say, but how is that math? Right? He didn't give them a formula. Well, okay, he did, but that's another talk. Um, but he didn't give them the formula they were expecting or an equation. He didn't put it in a spreadsheet. Um, that is not stereotypically what people think of as math. But what I want to emphasize is that math is not about getting the right answer to a formulated numerical question. Like if somebody asks you to multiply a bunch of numbers together or average a bunch of numbers. Um, I mean, any of you guys can do that. Your computer can do that for you. But that is not math. Math is knowing what computation to do, is knowing what question to ask, 